Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Ground Noise. My viewer, Augusto Rodriguez, wants to know how to put effects on an audio part, like vocals, for example, in Cubase. Let's cover that. Also, by the end of the video, I have three more tips for you. Very easy tips if you're a beginner music producer and still have trouble recording parts. So you don't want to miss that. But now, let's start. The easiest way to apply some effects to any part, like MIDI part or audio part here in Cubase, is to go to that track and click on this E button here, the E icon. This will open the channel settings. Here we are looking at the channel strip with some very basic effects that are really important, but you don't need to use them here. It's very practical, very cool. You have a full collection of all the compressors here in Cubase, everything you need, even saturation and limit, limiter and the EQ. And that's the thing I constantly use in my projects. It's the equalizer here. Just open this window. And I use this equalizer mainly to apply a high cut and a low cut filter very quickly to my track. Of course, you don't need to do that. I only show you the places where you can find the stuff. What you do with it is totally up to you. I'm not brainwashing anybody. So better let's look at the inserts slots here. This is a place where you can find all your plugins, your already asked where are my plugins my wall collection well here in the inserts just click on one empty slot and here they are let's just um, go for a compressor you see and you can open every effect with another click on the e icon e always stands for effect here we are but there is, in my opinion, an even better and quicker way to apply the inserts to a channel. We can close all of that. Just go to our track here. It's a little bit of piano that I've recorded. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but now you want to look at the inspector window here, the inspector panel. If you don't see that, it's closed. You can open and close it with these buttons here. Okay, but I recommend to always leave it open. Because the inspector is way too important. But it can be a little bit confusing to look at the inspector first. I've heard there will be a redesign of the inspector in the Cubase 13. Maybe when you see this video, it's already there and um, it will look a bit different than uh, this year. Anyway, just let's open the inserts panel here. And there you see our compressor. The same thing that we applied here. So it's often the case in Cubase that you have one and the same thing in different places. But is it really the same? Let's see. Uh, I go for an equalizer, for example. Let's go for this one. Doesn't matter. And as you can see, it also appears here in the channel settings window. I can open the effect here and close it here. And I can bypass the compressor if I want and deactivate bypass here. So you can see it's really the same thing. And now maybe it's a good idea to clean our signal with the equalizer before we send it to the compressor. So we need to change our effect chain. We just reorder the effects, drag and drop, see? So now our signal goes into the equalizer at first and then into the compressor. And that's basically everything you need to know about the inserts. And I think generally it's a good idea to have an equalizer and a compressor, for example, in the inserts. They are directly attached to the channel. But there are a lot of other situations where we more want to mix our signal into an effect. And for that we are use send channels. And again, we have two different places to configure our send channels uh, in the channel settings here, the right side, or again in the inspector. I normally go for the inspector because then I don't have to open this window. So, okay, what can I do with the sense channels? Um, when I click here, there is not much going on. I only can select my stereo. That doesn't make sense. So I need to open an effect channel at first with a right click and going for add effect track. And here I have already a reverb selected. It's okay. I'm good to go. And we see nothing because uh, it goes directly into this folder here. 
here it is, the FX channels folder. So and this is a channel, a wall channel only dedicated to one plugin, to one reverb in this case. And what's really important, what you really want to do when you're working with effect tracks, you need to crank the mix value up to 100% always, okay? So that it's only the effect what we hear on this channel and never the dry signal. Okay, what's the good thing about this method of using effect tracks? Of course, you have a wall track dedicated to that effect with all the options and all the features and possibilities that a normal track has as well. Also, if you want, you can apply more effects to that one channel. I personally never do that, but you never know. And we still need to send something into the direction of this effect track, right? So we go back to our audio piano part here, go to the sense or here to the sense in the channel settings. And now I can select my Roomworks reverb of that effect channel here. Switch it on. And now I can mix it in. Let's listen. Well, you know, you need to try it out. Oh, what is uh, the best way to do it in your project? Every project also is a bit different. Generally speaking, I would say that the original track stays a little bit cleaner and is uh, overall more controllable when you send it into an effect. And another advantage is uh, that you can send many instruments into one and the same effect. In our case, the reverb, so, so that you don't end up with a big reverb mess. Every track uses different reverbs and stuff. Oh, and by the way, when you watch my other videos, I have some videos where I really produce or go through a mix. Um, it's very interesting. You'll see how I use the sound effects and other things. So these are the main principles how you can put effects on your audio or MIDI track. But there is still more. <laughs> Let me just select my little piano part here and go to audio. It's an audio file, so... I go to audio and plugins and here you can see my list with all my plugins, the same list we have seen in the inserts here. So it's totally possible to attach an effect to only one part if you want to do that. And one step below is processes. Very interesting. I often use that here. You can normalize your audio files and of course reverse it for to create cool reverse effects and stuff and before i tell you the three important tips what i've mentioned in the beginning of this video let's talk about some typical effects for the stereo out and the stereo out is here this this thing it's the master track of your project everything goes through stereo out and here it really depends on your workflow what you need for effects in your stereo out i'm a kind of guy uh, who always makes final mixes and there's not much going on in the stereo out just a little compressor i will show you right now and mastering my tracks is a whole different story okay my final mix is one file and then this file goes into another project where i master it so just let's assume we are still in our production project here what am i doing with the stereo out master channel I just have my supervision here and that's a really cool, you can see it, it's really cool a meter plug-in with all the meters you need and not need, whatever. It's kind of priceless, it's already built in Cubase, use it. Also, it looks kind of cool when everything is blinking and moving. Okay, what else? Not much, like I've said, <laughs> but this one, the tube compressor, I really can recommend. I almost always have it in my uh, master channel here because it's a really cool compressor, very easy to handle. And I must say, I trust it. That's very important that I trust a plugin. And I really understand what it's doing and it doesn't create weird noises and stuff. It's really cool. If you want, you can crank up this drive button to add saturation. So you don't need a saturation plugin or something, uh, but it's very aggressive. But okay, I really can recommend this plug-in, this tube compressor. 
just to glue everything a little bit together like one or two dB. So believe it or not, that's most of the time all I do in my stereo out, all the effects I have in my stereo out. But like I've said before, I first create a final mix and then this final mix goes into a different project, into the master project where I do different things. But that's absolutely stuff for another video or, or many other videos. So you want to subscribe to the channel? I thank you very much for that. And again, if anything is unclear, please leave a comment. So now let's talk about the three major tips I have for you. So these things, one major rule and three tips I want to give you, uh, don't have much to do with the topic of this video, but you're still here and watching, so I want to give you a little bonus. I will make more dedicated videos about these topics because they are really important and not so easy to handle. Here's my major rule, still talking about effects. Effects cannot fix your problems, okay? You don't want to hear that, I know. Uh, this is not what effects are made for, okay? So my first tip, you don't want to have too much ground noise going on. I mean, mm, you want definitely more of this channel. It's called the ground noise for a reason. But you know what I mean, yeah? It can be so many things. It can be a broken, or old, terrible sounding, cheap microphone. It can be a dusty fader and, and a broken cable. It can be the kids in the background making noise and the computer fan and a motorcycle driving by. Normally, you want to avoid such things, okay? And the second thing is the gain staging. Whoa, mysterious name for a very simple thing. Because gain staging only means you want to have a rich and healthy signal in your pipes, okay? When you record something, it, the meter should be appear somewhere in this area with a little bit of headroom like minus 3, minus 5, something like that and never go above the 0 dB, that should be clear. And also when you record something and it only appears in this lower area here, that's not enough, okay? That's not really not enough, it's really bad gain staging. And this will very likely make up more and more problems. And what is my tip number three? Have a guess. Three, two, one. It's your performance, of course. Look, when you're a singer, you need to focus on your singing. You need to nail the part. And when the guitar is out of tune, the guitar is out of tune. And when your singing is sharp, your singing is sharp. There is no way out, okay? That's the reality. And you definitely want to make it a little bit better practice more. I often do that when I make my music. I, I, the part is often too complicated in that moment. I take a day off of recording and just practice. Then I come back being more secure and know what I'm doing and it will be better. It's totally worth it and it's much more fun after all than editing and editing and editing. Of course we have some very cool tools Here in Cubase, like um, Very Audio, for example, where you can really <laughs> correct wrong and sharp notes and, and, and stuff like that and e equal it, everything out. It's very cool. <laughs> But I only do that when there is absolutely no other way to rescue a part. But enough of that, at least for now. Please don't forget to leave a like before you go and a silly comment. That would be really nice. My name is Markus. You've been watching the ground noise. I thank you very much for watching and hope to see you soon in the next video.